Hello, we are Dan Dimitriou and Hui Bai. Thanks for checking out our video poster, Gender Differences in Agonistic Honor Intuitions. We have a lot of information in some slides, so we recommend pausing this video when necessary. Research on gender differences in moral reasoning has moved beyond the justice versus care paradigm inaugurated by Carol Gilligan in 1982. For instance, using Jonathan Haidt et al.'s moral foundations as a framework, Kaleva and collaborators in 2014 tested for gender differences and found women were significantly more moved by care and discussed considerations. To this increasingly complex picture of moral reasoning, we add the dimension of agonistic honor or agonism for short a highly masculine coded ethos whose principles have not been empirically assessed. Agonism, loosely understood to be an ethos of contest, is a developing construct in academic ethics. We understood agonism as an ethos that conceives of rightness and wrongness in terms of non-consequentialist or deontic principles that demand fair competition for prestige among respectable equals. In short, agonistic honor is an ethos that is used to determine prestige or competence rankings, as opposed to rankings that reflect power relations, power hierarchies, or authority structures. Agonistic honor is usually considered a highly masculine ethos, which is not unexpected given the importance of formalized contests cross-culturally, historically, and across species. The case for an evolutionary basis for an agonistic moral foundation or some theoretical analog is plausible. Some evolutionary theorists are now hypothesizing that human sporting behavior evolved as a lack that allowed tribe mates to assess young males. Behavior under the stress of competition is a very revealing indicator of metal, cooperativeness, aggression, and other important traits. And lecking behavior generally is valuable for onlooking females looking for honest signals of genetic quality. The principles of agonism, using highly procedural and ritualized contests to rank competitors into competence and not power authority rankings, are likely to be of greater reproductive importance to males than females. Thus, we predicted higher endorsement of agonistic principles among men than among women. In an MTurk survey of 362 men and 370 women, restricted to Americans, in part one, we asked respondents how much they agreed or disagreed with on a six point Likert scale, 56 statements, two of which were attention checks. About 40% of the questions were reverse scored and the questions were presented in a different random order for each respondent. Six statements, reflected concerns of care. In addition, we added 16 questions used similarly in the Moral Foundation's Your Moral Survey, three of which compose their care scale. To test agreement with principles of agonistic honor, we divided agonistic honor into eight principles, each of which was tested via four questions on the survey, forming eight subscales of agonistic honor. Here are those principles. And here is an example of the questions we used to gauge endorsement of the rank respect subscale. In part two, we presented respondents with six vignettes that pitted agonistic considerations against care-oriented considerations. And here is one example. With regard to the principles in part one, as we expected, female participants are significantly higher on the care scale as measured by our self-designed items, as well as moral foundation care items. Also, as we expected, males are higher on agonism, ambition, humility, and respect subscales. However, contrary to what we anticipated, females are significantly higher on the no ducking scale, and there were no significant differences on the fair play scale and friendly play scale. With regard to the vignette section of the survey that pitted considerations of care against agonism, two of our vignettes saw no significant difference between men and women respondents. 
Of the four with significant differences, two elicited slightly more agonistic responses from men, and two vignettes elicited slightly more agonistic responses from women. Our next steps will focus on the prospects of creating a psychologically valid measure for agonism. We will then revisit the question of gender differences and see what results we get from different populations. Thank you for watching.